All right, here is our video lesson on slope, and I asked them to do now which line is steeper, um, the red line or the blue line. And the answer is the blue line because, say you're starting, both lines actually start at 0, 2. But to move to the next point on the blue line, I have to go up 3 units and over 1. And this is consistent. I can go up 3 units over 1 to the next point, up 3 units over 1 to the next point. Whereas on the red line, if I started at this point, I would only go up one unit and over one, up one unit and over one, up one unit and over one, up one unit and over one. And it's because I'm going up less that the uh, red line is less steep than the blue line. And so the definition of slope is... And this is the idea of slope, is it's rise over run. How much you're going up by versus how much you're going to the right by. And the way we come up with this as a formula is we take, if we have two points on the line, say for example, I'll take these two points. This is the point 28. And you can take any points, but I'm going to take this point 28, and I'm going to take the point 3 comma 11. The way to get the rise is to take 11 and subtract 8. And what we do is we call 11 the y coordinate of the second point, or y2. The 8 is the y coordinate of the first point. And if you subtract them, 11 minus 8, you'll get 3. So the y coordinate of the second point minus the y coordinate of the first point divided by the way to get the 1 is to take the x-coordinates and subtract them. So we call this 3 the x-coordinate of the second point and the x-coordinate of the first point. And that is the formula for slope. And so we basically found the slopes by counting for line A. Line A would be we're going up 3. So I'll highlight this for you up 3, and to the right 1. So I went up 3, to the right 1, and 3 divided by 1 is 3. For line B, I'm only going up 1 for every 1 I go over. So the slope there would be 1 over 1, which is just 1. If we wanted to do this by the formula, for line A, I can choose any two points. So I'll choose 2, 8, and I'll choose 3, 11. So here are my points, 2, 8, 3, 11. Point 2 is my x coordinate of the first point. The 8 is the y coordinate of the first point. The 3 is the x coordinate of the second point. The 11 is the y coordinate of the second point. And the formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So y2 is 3, uh, sorry, y2 is 11. y2 is 11 minus y1 is 8 over my x2 is 3 minus the x1 is 2. And I just perform this calculation. 11 minus 8 is 3, 3 minus 2 is 1, and I get 3. Now I want to do it for line B. So line B, I can choose any two points on line B I want. Any two at all. So I'm going to be a little unique here. I'm going to choose this point, 1, 3. And I'm going to choose 4, 6. It does not matter which two points you choose as long as they're both on the line. So I'm going to have my 1, 3, 4, 6. I label x coordinate of the first point, y coordinate of the first point x coordinate of the second point, y coordinate of the second point. And I plug directly into my formula. Oops, let's get that out of the way. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. y2 is 6. y1 is 3. Over x2 is 4. x1 is 1. 6 minus 3 is 3. 4 minus 1 is 3, 
and 3 divided by 3 is 1, which verifies with the way that we counted. All right, so in the next problem, they ask you to draw a picture of the line connecting each of the following points and define the slope by counting and by the formula. So I gave you the point negative 3 comma negative 2 and 2 comma 8. So to count, I have to go up first. So I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And I'm going over 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I went up 10 and to the right 5. So the slope by counting is rise over run, 10 divided by 5, which is 2. Now by the formula. I have my points negative 3, negative 2, and 2, 8. So I'm going to call this one x1, y1, x2, y2. This is my slope formula. y2 is 8 minus y1 is negative 2. Be careful. It's 8 minus from the formula, and then a negative 2 from the actual point. So there's actually two negative signs here, divided by x2 minus x1, which is 2, 2 from here, from the point, 2 minus from the formula, and then negative 3 from the other point. So be careful there. 8 minus negative 2 becomes 8 plus 2, which is 10. 2 minus negative 3, which becomes 2 plus 3, is 5. And 10 divided by 5 is, of course, 2. So we get the same number whether we counted or whether we use the slope formula. All right, number 4, I'm actually going to use the formula first. I'm not even going to draw the line yet. I'm going to use the formula first. Negative 5, 6, and 3, negative 2. So my formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And y2 is negative 2 minus from the formula and a 6 from the point divided by x2, which is 3, minus negative 5. Negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8. 3 minus negative 5 becomes 3 plus 5. So this becomes negative 8 over 3 plus 5 is 8. And this time we get an interesting answer. A negative 8 divided by 8 is a negative 1. And now we're going to see why this happens. We have not gotten a negative answer yet for slope. Now we're getting a negative. This negative number is very important. So let's see what happens. If I graph this thing, negative 5, 6, and 3, negative 2, if you draw the line in, you'll see... The line is not rising from left to right. It's falling from left to right. If you look at it the way you read, the line is going down. So I have to put a little arrow on it. The line is going down from left to right. So if we were to count this slope out, I'm going down 1 from this point. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And since we're going in the downward direction, I want to call this negative. And we're going to move to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is a positive 8. As you move from left to right, that's positive. So if you get the slope by counting, you'll get negative 8 over 8, which is negative 1. So negative slope lines go downward from left to right. Okay. So a line with a negative slope, this has a negative slope. It goes downwards from left to right as opposed to a positively sloped line, which goes upwards from left to right. And now I believe you will be able to calculate the slopes in 5, 6, 7, and 8. Um, and what, what's going to happen there is you're going to see something that happens with the slopes, and we're going to use these as, as kind of practice problems.